Kim Swettinger, I'm a senior. Hello, I'm Victoria Mir, I'm a sophomore. We were partners in Nancy Mato's experimental design class, and the goal for our mid-semester project was to utilize the skills that we learned from our Arduino projects, from the workbook that we, that we did at the beginning of the semester. And also, we incorporated all the Arduino knowledge and our everything into one big final project in which we all did together. So we did a music box and we used the Arduino board and a module called an L298N module which we will explain and you also utilize 3D printing so we'll show you how we did it. All right, so you see this mess of wires here. This is everything that went into creating this project and making the motor spin and the hippo move, as you saw. So this is what we started out with. This is the Arduino board. Um, we searched up several different things, thinking that maybe we could use the Arduino board and a breadboard, but it turns out an easier way would be to purchase this, which is called an L298N module. This controls anything from the speed to the direction of the motor. You can, as you can see, you can hook up many different things to it. So first off, we'll start out with connecting the power to it. So here is where we connected the first battery. This is a simple battery pack that I bought it at Radio Shack. It can you can get one with this one has double A's. You can get one with triple A's. And this is a simple battery snap that we connected to a wire. And it's just snap. It would just snap right onto this. And this part is the negative wire. This negative wire gets connected to the second pinhole here and the positive wire gets connected to the first one here which then we connected to something called a lever switch um, it doesn't matter which one negative or the positive that this is connected to as long as it's along one line of the battery wire so for this particular switch you can use a push button switch but we thought that a lever switch would be much better these two outer parts connected like this would make it an, a normally open or normally closed switch or no, normally closed circuit, sorry. Um, that way when this is up the circuit is closed and the motor runs and when it's pushed down as in when the box is closed the circuit would be open and the motor would stop because who wants a hippo spinning when the box is closed. So this was this is that. Um, the f also with the negative wire for this battery is the ground wire which gets connected right here to the ground to the ground in the Arduino board. So this one gets connected again to the second hole here in the pin hole for the L two nine eight N module. Um, these three green wires are basically what we program to control the motor. This number nine here that I just disconnected is actually, if you follow it, it's, it's a bit of a mess, so bear with me. This one goes to the outer hole. It connects right here. The second one I'll trail it back. Let's see. This one gets connected to number eight. And then this last one, number seven, gets connected to the third hole in here. Um, you would need a male female connector. So there's actually a hole at the end of this that you could stick into here. And then the male part has a pin that you could connect in here. So that's it for the Arduino board.
um, for the motor. Switch things around here. Gets hooked in here. It, this is the positive. This gets hooked into the second one here. The positive is here. Um, zoom into the motor here. We'll see that the net negative and positive. We have a capacitor hooked up. If you have a capacitor, any capacitor, you know that you notice the longer side goes to the positive and the shorter side goes to the negative. But it's hard to see since this is soldered together. But this controls the amount of power going to the motor because we learned very quickly that by making by making the power lower in the motor, it actually made it, this wouldn't spin. You would just hear a whining noise. So pretty much what we did was we added the capacitor. So this kind of just controlled the speed going into the motor and it, it allowed it to spin slower. One problem that we had was that even with the capacitor, it wouldn't move at quite as slow as we wanted it to. So it does move a bit fast as you probably saw. And that's how that worked. And then with the music, I just purchased a simple um, a recording. It's a light sound recording module. So pretty much what I did was I hooked up an auxiliary cord right here and that got hooked up into the computer. It can get hooked up really to any device, but I hooked it up to the computer. Um, and you can play really any any type of song that you want. When you're ready, you press the button and it beeps twice and then it record you record the music and then once you're done you press it again. So this is controlled by a photoresistor. So that's how that works. Um, I'm going to explain the hippo. I'm going to explain that this is a 3D printed uh, model of a hippo. And previously to that, we had to work on using a 3D pen. And we actually found out that the 3D pen wasn't as effective as getting like all the holes covered up and stuff like that. So we decided to use a 3D pen. Uh, model of HIPAA because it actually it was sturdier and then when this will actually be placed on the motor it was actually going to be sturdy and it was going to spin more effectively than having just a 3D uh, pen model of a HIPPO that was actually lighter and had more holes in it. You can see this one is actually covered up and then the 3D model is actually more defined you can see the features of the hippo, the mouth, the legs, and also the part, different parts of it actually fit properly. So that's what we did with that. So we're going to put everything together and put this mess of wires in here. So there's also another battery that we have plugged in to the Arduino board. This goes to here, which we had to buy separately from the Arduino board um, so it could connect into here, into this port. So it plugs into here, battery snaps on, and that's that. I'm just going to put everything in. So I'm just putting everything in. It looks like a mess, but that's just how it is. And as you can see, some parts will fall off. This is one of the difficulties that we had with this project, was making sure everything stayed together. There are lots of trial and error 
a lot. That's what a lot of it was. Um, our professor helped us out a lot with this in terms of figuring out the code and controlling the speed. So that should fix it. I'm gonna stick everything in here. And then next I'm going to attach the batteries. <laughs> Already firing up. I kind of have the and see this came off again, which is fine. So pretty much just tape this onto here. Actually, I'm gonna attach it to this way because that way, when this gets we're using this little metal piece attached to the inside of the box which kind of when the box is closed it pushes down the button and stops the circuit all right I had to fix that then let's just taping this to the inside here so what this is going to do kind of see the motor spinning here so close the box, it stops the motor, so when we open the box, it's on, stops, so that's how that works, so we'll load everything into here. And this metal part is pretty much just a piece of wood that we cut out to just act as a false bottom. And we put four little dowel, dowel rods in each corner to hold it up. So I'm just going to put this here. And just attach this anywhere. We found that we couldn't attach it underneath because it would have interfered with everything else. It wouldn't have fit with this false bottom here. So I'm just going to press this button again to stop it. You can see this. The bottom of this is what we're attaching to the top of the motor. That's a little bit of a challenge. So, you take the cover off of this here. And that's pretty much how we did it. As you can see, it spins a bit fast. Um, this was the slowest speed that we could get it to. Any slower in the motor wouldn't have worked. So this is pretty much as slow as we could program it. And we'll show you the code and so you can edit it yourself. And I'm just going to stop this. And that's it.